Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial about Power Automate Desktop Custom Actions. In the previous tutorial, we went ahead and created our first project. In this particular tutorial, we are going to understand the project structure in detail. So first and foremost, let's start from the Solutions Explorer. In the Solutions Explorer, you have got two main categories. One is Dependencies, second is Properties and third is Action 1. The action1.cs or the class file is where the real magic happens. However, let's quickly look at the dependencies. So first you have the assemblies to come out of the box, that is the system assemblies. So nothing fancy out here. Under the packages, you have the package known as microsoft.powerplatform.powerautomate.desktop. And if you see, this is the exact version that I installed, right? So this is very important. Next, you have properties. The most important part under the properties is the resource file. The resource file is the place where you can define metadata. For example, as you see on the screen, you have the module description. That is the description of the entire module and a friendly name. It is always recommended to have an action or a module description, a model friendly name. Similarly, you can also have an action description and an or action friendly name. So if you want to change the module description, let's go ahead and change it here. So I'll say that the module is used to greet people. Okay. And the friendly name of the module will be greet. Perfect. Right. So this is where you define the metadata about your module or your actions. Now that you understand why the resource file is being used, we can also define, we also need to look at the action.cs file. So I have saved the resource file and here is where the real magic happens. So first and foremost, here you see that you have got default namespaces used in the project. This is really important. And it's also going ahead and using the system namespace. Your main class files namespace is modules.31. So this is where you go ahead and define the action and what it does. So firstly, you have an action, you have an action name or an action ID, an action friendly name and an action description. The same could also be defined in the resource file. So let's say that the action name is greet person. And let's say the description of the action is hello, your name. Next is what happens when an error occurs, right? However, the error action is defined in a method override named dash execute, right? Before we get into the execute method, let's understand the properties that are being defined. So first and foremost, I like the idea of regions. Regions out here is used to go ahead and organize your code better. So the first region out here is the property. So if you see, there are something known as input properties and the output properties. The input properties also have a friendly name. So here I can say input friendly name, but what should I have as an input? Should it just be input? Uh, argument let's say input input your name and the description of the action would be input the name to be greeted so it has getters and setters accessors which are used to get the data and set the data similarly i'm defining the name or an input of a type string similarly we have output arguments the output for argument is used to display the output the output argument is of type string. We can change the friendly name out here. So I can just say output name, you are greeted here, right? Let's keep it simple. So what we are going to create, you might already have guessed it. We are going to create a hello world example. And the hello world example comes out of the box. So here you see that we have a public override method known as execute. And this, my friends, is where the real magic happens. So here I can say what happens with my code. And if the code wrong goes wrong, what happens? What happens if the code gets wrong? It goes into the catch block. 
So that being said, let's go ahead and create a simple little example as hello world. So what will I do? Firstly, I need to define what I need to print. So I'll copy this output argument from here and paste it. And here I will say dollar hello world and then just just put a dollar again and here I'll pass in the input argument. So let's say the input argument is defined on the top and its name is input argument one. Is that correct? Yes, it's correct. So this my friends should go ahead and print as hello world when we pass an input parameter for the name and it should just display hello world your name. So let's go and save this code. The code is saved. Let's go ahead and build this code. So I'll say build. So now that your hello world code is ready, in the next block we will in the next video, I will show you how you can package this code and upload this code into your Power Automate cloud or Power Automate online portal. I hope this session was informative. Thank you for your time and see you in the next tutorial.